Alright, welcome back to another week of Power of Guide. Today we are going to be called, our message for today is called Teaching the Truth. So I want to kind of go ahead and get started with uh, putting up the first verse on the screen. I forgot a background today. Of course I did. I did that to all of them. Oh, well, that's fine. We'll go without it. We can work without that. Let's just go ahead. Second Corinthians eleven two through six. For I am jealous. Oh, I should probably put that on the screen. There we go. For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy. For I have espoused you to one husband. I am, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. But I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through subtility, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. For if he that cometh preaches another Jesus, whom, ye, whom we have not preached, or if you have received another spirit which we have not received, or another gospel which ye have not accepted, you might well bear with him. For I suppose I was that wit behind the very chiefest God apostles. But though I be rude in speech, yet not in knowledge, but we have been thoroughly made manifest among you in all things. The teacher of the word should always be alert so that you do not teach any other gospel. The teacher of the word should always be alert so that you do not teach any other gospel. Paul, as our apostle to the Gentiles, is our pattern. He had a godly love for those who he, who he taught to, so he wanted them to know the truth. It is important to remember, we are a sinner saved by grace. We are nothing more. But God loves us with perfect love. We live now to serve God, so that, so that means teaching what is correct. Remember also that you don't have to be highly educated to preach the gospel. God can use anyone. He does not have he does not favor for learned people. My favorite example is a uh, Les Feldick. Look him up sometime. Les Feldick. He um he's a good preacher out out in the western part of the country. Didn't have any actual religious training, but is one of the best preachers we have. All you need to share the gospel is God and the Bible. And since the body of Christ started with Paul in Acts 9, he is our pattern in salvation and our walk with God. Let's go ahead and look at 1 Timothy 1, 15 through 16. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation. The Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of who I am chief. Howbeit for this cause I obtained mercy, that in me first Jesus Christ might shew forth all long suffering, for pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. Paul's usage of the words chief and me first indicate that he was the first in the body of Christ. 
keep that one in mind. Now, a lot of people like to use the word chief like he was the captain of sinners. Like he's the worst. And yes, that could be used. There is better references to that concept because he calls himself the worst of the sinners. But in the context here, the word chief means first. Because, like for instance, the captain or chief of a ship, when it would sink, it would decap. Yeah, bad example. Just forget that one. Him being the first. This tells us that we are to follow what he teaches in God's word as believers today. And what he teaches is faith alone in the death, burial, and rise, resurrection of Christ being sufficient to wash away all sins. Denominations tell us works as the gospel for today. That is highly incorrect. But we know better. As believers we should. Let's see. Ephesians 2, 8 through 9. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. This is what God's word says through Paul. Teaching the word requires you to be humble before the Almighty God. Yes, teaching the word requires you to be humble to the Almighty God. Where's my truck? Sorry. Again, let's go ahead and look back at Ephesians 2 8. There we go. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. You are saved by grace. Let's look at Romans 3.26. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Now let's look at Romans 3.28. Therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Man cannot do it by itself. We need God. Let's go ahead and look at 1 Peter 5, 6 through 7. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that ye, ye may exalt, that he may exalt you in due time. Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. You do not have to be educated to teach the truth. All you need is your Bible and the ability to rightly apply the word of truth. 2 Timothy 2.15 Study to show thyself approved unto God, for it that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Remember, one of the most key things to remember is that, remember that all the Bible is God's word. That is one of the most important things you can learn. Let's look at that. Second Timothy 3.16 All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. So all you've got to do is study it, rightly divided. You have, when teaching the truth, you have to understand what part of the Bible is directly to me in the body of Christ today. All the Bible... All the Bible is for us. Genesis through Revelation. All of it is for us. However, what part of it is directly to us? I like to use the Stam's, C.R. Stam's example. He went to see the Lord a while back ago. He's long ago. However, his example in his book, Things to Differ, is very good in explaining this concept. All the Bible's for us, but what is directly to us? Take the post office, for example. Each set of mail, if the mailman just delivered mail to whomever, they would read the mail, but be confused because they don't understand, and then they try to make sense of instructions that are not for them. Now, when the mail is rightly divided and handed out to the right people, they understand the instructions that they are given and know what to do.
when reading the Bible, let's say you can go to in Numbers. Who's it to? It's obviously to the nation of Israel, not to the body of Christ. Ezekiel, Israel. Baal goes to Israel. Hebrews, Israel. Philippians, body of Christ. You have to make sure you understand where you're going. And if you're reading outside of the body of Christ, you have to understand that you can't directly apply that to yourself today. Unless it's like simple principle of God. Understand that this church is specific to us. For the body of Christ is the Apostle Paul's Epistles. Romans through Philemon. It's just that simple. If that is what your truth is, you are teaching the truth. But if you stray from that, that's when you fall out of the truth. That's what I call, when you fall away from that, that's what I call scripture misuse. Because you are not in line with what the word says about it. You divide the Bible, not to like throw any part away. However, you divide it. Understand the difference between part of it and note the differences. That's what's commanded in 2 Timothy 2.15. Let me see here. Oh shoot, it's going to come off the wrong screen. I'm going to take a couple quotes out of my book, Power of God, which explains some of this. And this is my favorite quote that I put into this. Amongst Christendom, there are several doctrines that people hold to. Most of these things are just taken by tradition. I know several like this. Unfortunately, doctrinal positions have become much like religion itself in today's society. We have made religion and doctrine sort of like a Walmart store. This has caused a great deal of confusion across those who study the scriptures and those who do not. What I mean by Walmart store is that religion and doctrine have become very picky and choosy. You walk into the store and pick the items you want. There will be ads to attract you to the more desired products. A lot of times it can be confusing. A lot of times you are very indecisive. Moreover, after you, your purchase is complete, you make it apply to your life. If it can't fit into your life, we tend to force it by changing it. In the case of religion and doctrine, the different items are likewise made to fit one's life. In one way or another, people tend to figure it out, regardless of the circumstance. This is not what the God of all creation intended. Regardless if their stance is scriptural or, scripture or not, people just don't care anymore. Giving them, so, so, giving them something convenient to life, they'll take it right up. It doesn't matter if it is in line with the scriptures or not. So long as it fits into their lives, that's when it all works for them. If what they picked out doesn't change them a whole lot, they accept it. Let's be clear. This is not how God commanded us to handle our beliefs. The Bible is a book of change, of God's will and purpose. It is of his will, not our own. If we cannot rely on the word itself and its true infallible meaning, we have a very serious problem. Who do we trust to give the correct words? We must be able to re rely on the word for all things, as we discussed in 2 Timothy 3.16. To be aligned with God's word, we should know how to properly interpret the Bible. Essentially, it boils down to three key factors. Having the right Bible version per your language, 
literally interpreting the national text. It's not spiritualizing the scriptures, but understanding what does it actually say, and rightly dividing it. I'm most positive that God would not give us his completed word to us without giving us a way to interpret it. He does, and we will cover on that. However, if there is a way to interpret it, then logic must tell us that the word of God is complete. We must understand the Bible, Genesis to Revelation, minus the Apocrypha and the Book of Mormon, etc., is the completed word of God. We will discuss the events on how it was completed in a later part. Who even presented with... Sometimes I will present you with ground evidence truths on this matter. I will stress it repeatedly. God did not give us his completed word without a proper way to interpret it. I do believe simple logic is needed here. We as believers, if we are honest with ourselves and others, and the word, know good and well that God does not directly speak to us like he did in the scriptures. He does not talk to us in person. Rather, he does it through his word. This must mean that this word of God must have the keys to properly, properly interpreting the scriptures. It would make sense that the Bible would speak for itself. Indeed, like any topic within the Bible, it must be studied to understood. That was what 2 Timothy 2.15 commands of us. Study to shew thyself. But that verse doesn't stop there. In fact, that ver very same verse is within that very same verse is the key to proper study slash interpretation of the Bible. The full verse, 2 Timothy 2.15, let's pull that up for you. Study to shew thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Think about that for a second. It gives a direct command. It is command involving the word of truth, which is the word of God, our source of authority. This is something that should not be ignored concerning what it is in relation to rightly dividing. We understand that this is exactly what this verse is talking about. Other Bible versions dub the phrase as properly handling the word of truth. Now this is not the way God intended for it to be written. God wanted a vision to be clear. However, it is the same basic concept. Truthful Bible interpretation it is also clear because the beginning of the word study. How much more evident can it be? If you were to read a textbook for study, you would have to know how the textbook is laid out. You can't just rely on the teacher to tell you where everything is. If you really want to excel, excel in the class, you'd have to dig in and study. To truly understand the Bible, you must study rightly divided. When you see the scriptures rightly divided, the Bible is henceforth properly laid out. Without right division, you don't have a proper understanding of God's word. Furthermore, the reason for the writing of 2 Timothy makes it clear verse 2.15 is about proper interpretation. Timothy, the godson of the Apostle Paul, who of which wrote the epistle, was desired to be a preacher. That is why in 1 Timothy 3, 1, Paul says to Timothy, If any man desires the office of a bishop or preacher, pastor, whatever, he desires a good work. 2 Timothy was Paul's last epistle before his execution by death, and he knew it. This means the content of this epistle will be some of, most, uh, some of the most important stuff in the word in regards to the body of Christ. To Paul, and as it should be to us, it was urgent. Of course, with Paul making urgency out of it, it must have some point by be dealing with one being saved. If such was not true, an entire passage on teaching the word correctly would not be there. If it wasn't important, it would not be in the word. Second Timothy 3.16, all scriptures profitable. Look at Second Timothy, the whole chapter. It is evidently, it evidently is an important as it is in the Word. In 2 Timothy 2.15, we are given the very instruction on how to properly interpret the Word by rightly dividing it. If we don't, we disobey God's Word and fall into what I call scripture misuse. Scripture misuse, scripture misuse is when we take a verse away from its context. A lot of times due to this, we end up blindly following certain religious traditions. It's a very common mistake. Turn on a church on the television or web, there's a good chance that at least one verse is used incorrectly. I'm sure I'll do it at some point. Don't be discouraged. We all fall into the trap. You are not alone on that. Satan is very crafty. 
He's become accomplished in using God's word against us. He knows what it is, and he knows exactly how to use it against us. Therefore, when we read the Bible, you should ask these following questions. Number one, who wrote? Number two, when was it written? Number three, to whom was it presented to? Number four, what was the purpose? And number five, what dispensation was it under? What must be rightly invited about the Bible? The dispensations. A dispensation is quite literally something that God does. More specifically, it is a divine administration. The Bible is comprised of God's dealings. This is common sense. A dispensation is a dealing of God with mankind. Thus, common sense should tell you that there are several in the scriptures. And do not be mistaken. A dispensation is not a time period as a lot would believe. I ask that you stay away from this concept. It has caused so much confusion and has turned people away. The reason being is that the time period approach gives the idea that God changes, which he does not. To understand what was going on in the scriptures, you must know what God is doing at the point in scripture. If we don't study, you won't know and the scriptures do not make sense. When you study, you start to notice differences in the things that God is doing. Without knowing this, you will call out contradiction. Once you get away from the contradiction mindset, you will begin to see huge differences step by step. To see exactly what is happening, and you must rightly divide these differences. It becomes imperative that you divide them at the right spots, especially the biggest two dispensations, law and grace. You've heard those terms before, most likely. Law and grace, law and grace. You probably heard the famous phrase, well, I ain't under law, I'm under grace. That is exactly true. But some don't even rec recognize them as dispensations because most people turn away from the concept of dispensationalism. This is a globally accepted name. It is accepted by the scriptures. <coughs> and they must be recognized to understand and to teach the word the word. Honestly, I will, you know, I'm still learning how to handle these things. I'm not perfect. Often I come across as too harsh. The result is people turning away. What I'm beginning to learn is that the way I tend to come across is not the way God intended for me to. I want people to understand the truth and see the truth as it is. Satan has such a blind on the world today. I think in order for anything like revival to happen, preachers need to buckle up and start preaching the word correctly. Or it ain't going to happen. going to close you all with the word of prayer and then just go ahead and close down now. Dear God, thank you for this amazing time to get to spread the knowledge I have to these people who may be watching. I ask that you that you bless them with what was taught today and that they take it and apply it and that they learn to uh, properly interpret your word God and I pray that they see it and that they that even though they might be dog for teaching this way that they stand as a pillar in the middle of darkness and that they and that they take a stand for you in your name I pray amen